Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows. In today's episode we're going to take a little look at a lawnmower that I sold to a bloke about eight, nine months ago I think. Um, it was a web lawnmower with a Briggs & Stratton um, classic engine on top. Video to that, um, the link to the video is there up above. Uh, this lawnmower came to me, I picked it up, uh, cheap as chips um, in Worthing and I'm convinced the lawnmower from day one had not done a day's work, not even been started. Um, I got it running, I sold it, did it all up, I made, made it look nice and tidy, and uh, off it went. Anyway, the fella has um, texted me just the other day to say he needs it um, up and running, and uh, pretty much since he bought it, it was his backup mower, and he's never ever um, used it. So, he so managed to get it fired, but it, it, it doesn't, doesn't run at all very well. Um, I went and looked at it, and um, it runs really lumpy, um, which is a strange, because it had a full service when it went out, so I'm not quite sure what's up with it. If it's your first time watching Mixed Mows, hit the subscribe button and whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told when I've done a video or two on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Just before we get on, I did get a, pri a little present off my Amazon wish list. I have featured this already on my live stream, but for those of you who don't watch my live stream, I thought I'd uh, show you. Got a little tiny gift. It simply says, enjoy your gift and thanks for the advice, um, the prize, uh, uh, thanks in advance for the prize on Saturday the 12th of September. Um, when the Kinder Eggs are back in stock, I will treat Riley Boy all the best from James, uh, Peter James. So that's cool. Peter James sent me um, a 10 pack of 80 grit um, flappy discs, which is fantastic. They're coming well handy when I'm doing um, some mower deck repairs. Uh, so that's good. Thank you very much for that, Peter. Much appreciated. And on top of that, on my live stream also, uh, Top Conquer sent me a, a spark plug necklace, very similar to what Terra Fixes All does on his channel. Um, but he sent me a, um, a torch spark plug. Um, an F7R TC, um, and funnily enough, on the live stream, if you watch the live stream back when I open the box up, uh, this is a brand new plug, um, and uh, I tested it on my multimeter, and it's actually dud. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for that, Top Conquer. I shan't wear it all the time because um, sitting down working on the engines, this is gonna get right in the way. But uh, I might shorten it down a bit so it's a bit a bit higher up. But anyway, thanks for that, Top Conquer. You are a little star. You have a little present winging your way to you. So without further ado, let's get down dirty, let's check out this web little lawnmower, see what's up with it. I'll, I'll get it running for you and um, show what it's doing, then we'll get up on the bench and see what's going on. So incidentally, um, that's my old Ransom, the one I did up. Um, this one's come in, I picked that one up for nothing, uh, free to collector. Um, it does fire, doesn't run. Um, and it had the wrong spark plug in, that'll be coming up very soon on a video. I'll be doing a little little uh, um, restoration on that one, possibly. Uh, there's my little Kawasaki, that, that might have sold that one. We should wait wait and see how we get on with that, but I think that might have sold. We should see. Um, also, oh, 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 also, look what I got. Nice brand new box. Uh, cable is now all in, all up the garden done, and I've wired up my me, uh, me sockets off of a ring main. Um, or ring circuit, whatever you want to call it now, and I've upgraded two of them, so I've actually now got uh, USB sockets too. So I've got one, two, uh, three, four down there, and one here. I'm going to put another one down here somewhere out the way. Uh, my lights are running off my sockets at the moment, they're due to be done today, due to go on to do those. And also, for those that don't know, I've done some insulation too. Um, got some of this um, insulation comes out of cargo uh, comes out of cargo containers. Really good stuff. So far, all this wall's been done. You can see it just tucked behind here. All that's been done. All of this has all been done. I've got a bit more ply board in here, all the way down there, and that back wall was three quarters done. Windows have been upgraded as well to, to solid perspex windows, not just two little tiny bits that's now solid. So yeah, lots of upgrades happening in the mixed mode shack. There's a cable drum. Uh, all right, let's come over here. And have a look, look at this. I need to have it now that cable's in. I can now uh, have a bit more of a sort out. My, my, my mowers are just, as you can see, everywhere. Mrs. P loves it. But I need to sort that out. So here's the little web. Okay. I'll show you what it's doing. I can get it running, um, but it ain't running very well. So let's have a little go. I want some new pull cord bollocks for two. That pull cord's about ready to snap. So he has used it. So that's what it's doing, <clears throat> um, it's not very well. 
It sounds a bit electrical, a bit of fuel, and it's over revving. So let's get up on the bench because it wasn't doing any of that when I sold it to him. And he says he hasn't used it, but uh, that pull cord tells me tells me different. Uh, but we'll have a look in underneath as well, see what's going on, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so number one, the bloke said he hasn't used it. Okay, I'm seeing grass on the top of the machine, and also just taking the grass box off. And uh, in the grass box, uh, we have uh, very, very old grass. So it has been used. Um, I don't think he's lying. I'd say like, maybe he hasn't used it very much. Maybe, maybe I misheard him. Um, but it's definitely been used in that respect. And yet yeah, we've got grass under here as well. The blade has got a little tiny bit of a nick in it, but not too shabby. It's not as clean as it, what it was when it went out originally. So first thing to do is check out uh, the over revving, put a new pull cord on it, test a coil, new part, new spark plug, all that sort of good stuff. That's what we're going to be doing, because it's got it's got like a like a jittery sort of noise to it, and that jittery noise is telling me that it's got a um, an electrical problem, possibly as well as a fuel problem. Okay, so let's take a few bits off. Three three eight bolts, which is your standard on these. Quite a bit. That's a bit quick. Let's turn it down a smidge. One over here, and that will then remove our pull cord assembly. Off that comes. Okay, I don't want to scratch no paint here. This is well, this is well sprayed up. This old machine. So I put a new pull cord on there because usually that pull cord is absolutely knackered to say. That's about ready to snap. So we we'll get rid of that. Um, we're going to disconnect the spark plug, uh, which is a B2LM in there. Um, Looking at the spring, someone's had a little bit of a play by the looks of it on the spring. That's possibly why it's over revving. Uh, but what I want to do is remove the air filter as well, because I want to take the um, lead off of this coil so I can then test the coil, because it's sounding like uh, it's, it's got an electrical fault. Could just be a plug, but uh, rather than just change the plug out, there's a bit of oil on there, not a great deal. Um, so let's now try and remove the little lead which is down in there. A little pair of long nose pliers will do that. Let's get a pair of long noses. I lost my little red red handle set again. I keep on losing them. Let's take the little coil wire off. If I can get to it without breaking anything. I don't want to take the coil off. I don't have to. I'm going to leave a coil in situ. But to, to test the core, you've got to take the core wire off, you see. There it goes. Well, that's a core wire now disconnected. Just tuck it underneath. Remember to put it back on later on. Otherwise, um, you're going to uh, not be able to stop the engine. It's a full spark plug. I've chilled it off. So let's set the old multimeter up. Let's put it down here. Check the continuity first. Beep. Yeah, on the 20k, and then we want to test uh, in the HT lead boot itself. Hold that in there, and onto here. Might take his bolts out. 9.4, that's all right. Nothing, oh, there you go. Yeah, I've got a reading. That's not doing a lot there, that's flashing up. It's giving me real, some real funky numbers. So I might have to take this one off. Let's put it on the uh, terminal down here. See what we get. 9.4, but I'm getting a bit of a funky reading off of this here. So I'm going to remove um, with a little quarter, quarter inch socket. I'm going to remove uh, the, the coil because I am getting a bit of a funky reading off of it. So just to benefit, to make sure we get the, the right reading, as I say, just remove this coil. I was hoping to get away about it. They come off. And then we can then remove the coil all together. All right, let's try that again. Let's see what we get. Positive in, all the way down, and hold that. Got the right funky reading off of this one over here. Let's try that. 
five. Nine thousand. Nine and a half thousand. That's good, that one. There you go. That's better. Let's come back. Nine and a half. Turn it over. Nine and a half. Yeah, cool. So that's actually a good coil. What I'm going to do, if I want to get some funky readings, I'm just going to clean off this terminal here, both sides. There's a bit of oil in there too, so that's not probably helping. Um, which might be coming off, the, off of the breather, possibly. I should clean these off as well, uh, these little terminals. Give them a bit of a clean off. So the coil is good. Let's have a look at this, this spring. Yeah, someone's had a bit of a bit of a bend up on that old spring. That's not doing what it should be doing. Uh, so someone's been in there. We can definitely see that. It's got a brand new spring on it, which I fitted uh, when I serviced the machine. So that can all uh, come off as well. Not happy with that little spring there. That's not, that's not right. Um, hey ho. Let's um, have a plug out next. Okay, so now the core's now all been tested, you know. I've cleaned it all up both sides, front and back, and on the, on the ends as well. And these have a certain way to go up, and it says on here, uh, this side out, and cylinder side. So there's a cylinder. So the cylinder side goes down onto there, okay? Otherwise it won't work. It won't work properly. Put a little tiny lead on. Hook that up to there. Get a bit of card. Got a bit of card here. Stick that in. And then you'll get your, your two little tiny bolts. That one goes in there. That one goes in there with your, your vein on. There it is. Screw them down to position. Make sure it's up against the flywheel as tight as you can get it with a gap. That there, it doesn't have to be that colossally tight. As long as it's down, right, let's give it a couple of little wallops. Just to make sure it's uh, in situ. <coughs> Take a bit of, a bit of card or paper out that you've got. You've got your gap in there now, which is fine. Um, I'll turn the machine round because I want to look at this tank as well <coughs> and the spring. So let me switch the uh, lawnmower around in the way and we'll get a bit of a better look at it. Okay, magnets all look nice and clean, they're not an issue. Got the little throttle bit here to put on. As I can, as I can see, the um, this little spring is fine. That's got to be hooked up onto this little vein here. Once it goes onto a carburetor, of course. Um, but this carb's going to come off. And then this little spring here, someone's had a little a little go at that. I've got a feeling that might be that might have too much tension on it. That's the thing. Let's just check the fuel. Fuel's really, really clean. Absolutely spotless. But that's not to say the carburetor isn't carburetor isn't clean itself. So I'm gonna remove the carburetor off this off this lawnmower. Just for just for peace of mind. It's simply done with a, a 3 8 bolt on the front and a half inch on the back. Let me grab my half inch, which I think is that one. So free out bolt on the front, which is that one, followed up by half inch. Oh my word, who did that up? Because the they do snap, I've had them snap on me. Game over then. Pull the tank out. That's all good. Just want to double check now the intake is not loose and not cracked. I know it's not cracked down this end. Just having a quick little visual inspection all the way around, best I can. That's not cracked, it's actually really, really good. So now we're left with uh, the tank that's got perfect fuel in it. The fuel is absolutely A1. Nothing wrong with the fuel at all, but I want to check inside here to see what's going on inside this, um, this carburetor. So that's simply done just with a um, Phillips screwdriver. And all we're going to do is just undo these uh, four or five Phillips screws. I want to check what's in the well, you see, because the fuel may be really good. But the um, the well may be gunked up. So let me get these undone and I'll come back to you before I lift it off. Well, I've loosened the old screws off. That should now lift off. I want one more just to, just to take right out. Let's take that one out. Oh, that should now lift. There it goes. Take that out. There's a little bit of gunk in the bottom of it, of the well, just inside here, not a lot. But the diaphragm's got a few creases in it. It's not looking brilliant. Very, very saggy. 
um, which is better than stiff, right? But um, it doesn't look too shabby in here. As I say, this has not done a lot of work, so I'm going to renew the gasket and diaphragm anyway. Uh, it looks very, very saggy. Uh, but the carburetor looks to be good, but I'm going to put just going to take these bits and pieces out anyway and give it a bit of a carburetor clean. Uh, he said the choke didn't work, but obviously it doesn't have a choke as a primer bulb system, so there's a bit of a dryness in there. It doesn't look very as if that's running very well in here either. So a bit of a carburetor clean, dot off camera very quickly, and I'll come back. Okay, carburetor now cleaned. Um, I will say this little tiny jet at the back here, that, that was slightly plugged, um, but the actual tube itself was good. Uh, this was very dry just in here, which I've now cleaned it out. And uh, gasket and diaphragm was a little bit um, saggy. And there was like some, some residue in here. Uh, it, 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 it was like milky color. Um, so that's been cleaned out. So brand new um, original Briggs and Strat gasket diaphragm. Now you've, you've seen me do these before 155,000 times. So feel free just to forward on. But for those of you that haven't, then this is a video for you. So let's get a new gasket diaphragm out. <clears throat> very, very simply, just line it up and the diaphragm will go on first. Down the bottom there, line it up the holes. Like that, and then get your, your gasket, that go on top, okay? Once that's in place, you can then get your main jet that goes back into the carburetor, goes in any old how. Just about to give it a bit of a wiggle, wiggle it just a little bit, just so it, uh, it sits down. Once it sits down halfway, then you can just get your back of the screwdriver and just hear a click, like that, okay? Once that's gone click, get your little gauze, so that's absolutely clean, there's nothing wrong with that. That goes on top of there. Uh, that's it, and then your straw goes into this hole and your um, screen goes into this hole, okay? So just loosey-goosey line it up. Make sure your spring's on there as well. Loosey goosey, okay, don't go screwing up and down just yet. Get your screws, there's five of them, and literally just wiggle it just a little bit, just to they go in. Once, once, once one or two find their home, we'll be laughing. But don't screw it down yet, okay? So that's a couple going in. And when you screw this down, use a cross, cross method, but don't do them up like your life depends on it, okay? You don't need to, otherwise you get a bit of a leak out the back. So. Let's just start to wind them in home. What I do is I kiss all mine down first. So just, just to there, kiss it down, come right to the other side. If you do it up too tight, you can walk the carburetor. You walk the carburetor, you're looking at a 25, 30 pound replacement. All right, so let's just loosey goosey them down <clears throat> using a cross hatch method, as I said. One here behind the old intake tube, just there. Once they're all kissed down, you can then just tighten them up. So just give them a, just a you know just a quarter of a turn. We don't we don't need a lot, really. They don't. A quarter of a turn is more than enough. Now, if it leaks at the bottom of a gasket diaphragm, then just go another quarter of a turn. But literally, I'm just just kissing them down. All right. Once they're down, get yourself your rag. Give it a clean off around the back here. This is where they leak, just down here, okay? Give it a clean off, but shut your, shut your flap off, okay? And then give it a couple of primes. See it leaking there? Is that leaking? Yeah, it's leaking, see it leak? So that's because it's not quite tight enough, I'm hoping. Now, if it still leaks after you've tightened it, um, what you can then do is what's called double gasket and put another gasket underneath it. So let's just try that. Again, just gonna dry it off. And this time, no leak, okay? If you do it too tight, then um, what happens, comes Riley boy, then what happens is um, you walk the carburetor, okay? And it, and it never work. Say again, Riley. Come here. I can't hear you, buddy, I'm doing a video. Come and say hello to the guys. He's coming, here he comes, managing director. Bear with me, he's coming in a minute. Yep. Down here, come show me. I can't hear you, buddy. What are you up to? Oh, what, work phone? Yeah. Oh, well, Daddy's not at work. Daddy's on annual leave now for two days. What, did it ring? Yeah. It didn't? Yeah. No, it didn't ring, mate. No phone calls. 
Oh, one from Glasgow yesterday. No, that's fine. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. There's Riley Boy. Just fixing this one here. Riley Boy, what, what, what are we going to be doing soon? What, 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 what's coming up? Halloween. Halloween. You're a bit big on Halloween, buddy, ain't you? And what are you going to dress up as? Pennywise. Pennywise. So, um, yeah, we're, no, we're big on, we're big on a Halloween in this house. We've got a big coffin, haven't we, in the background there. You can see it in the background, big coffin, oh, yeah. which we'll jump out of and chase the kids, so that's cool. <clears throat> right, uh, that's my little Riley boy. He's back. He's, uh, he's got the weekend off, which is good. So this machine needs to be done by Monday. The bloke needs it back. <clears throat> so now that carburetor's all done, the juice is really, really good. I'm just having a bit of a clean off, just a general tidy up, because you need to make sure it's not leaking out the front of the carburetor. Uh, when you do these and because the petrol evaporates you don't always tell so a little bit of a, a clean and then just give it a bit of a pump again and check around the front of this this carburetor now and we're getting no leaks out the front either no that's coming down down from the side here where it's just filling out the bottom now so that's fine so that's all good <clears throat> so now this little um car can go back on um i'm going to hook it up to the vein first as per, and then, oh, come here, that's it, onto there. And then I'm then gonna bring it up onto the carburetor itself. Like so, and on that goes. Now I've still got to hook up the, the, uh, the big spring yet, because that's not quite right. So that all goes on together, happy with that. This little tiny piece here, that just sits in there, like so. I'll make sure you're in shot. And then you've got your half inch stew. That goes into there. Just loosey goosey at first because you've got to fit your ten your your three eight on the front. And then four of my old you know, lift table here. That one goes in there. Just start him off, okay? And then come back to your, your half inch and just give it a couple of impacts, okay? And then your ten mil or three eights can then be done up there so that's the carburetor and now been cleaned it it wasn't filthy filthy but i, I think it, i do feel it needed doing and this this gasket as you can see it's, it's been although it hasn't been used it's just been sat in petrol so uh, it's not doing a lot i always keep my gaskets in case you have the um the uh the carburetor leak on you you can always double gasket them okay just lay two gaskets down instead of having the one and that should fix a leaking carburetor problem Right, so that's that done. <clears throat> I need to look at this this big spring. Let me bring this lawnmower back up. It's about to fall off. That's it. And see what we've got here. If it's done it right to me, this is uh, this is too much tension on this. Too much tension on this little spring. There should be nothing like that. I've got a feeling this is broken. The tab's broken off of it. So I'm going to remove this spring. And in fact, I'm just going to get rid of it. I've got some spares, okay, I'll get rid of that. I'm gonna get another, get another spring onto there um, to replace it. Give it two ticks and we're gonna find it. Right, I've got a donor spring. Um, it's not a new one. I'll get a bit of a clean up, just clear. Just clear. But you can see a nice big long leg on there. The other one didn't have it, that was a cut about here. And uh, it's got a little tiny O-ring this side here. So I'll give it a bit of a clean up with some carburetor spray just to, just to tidy it up. I've got the carburetor spray just here. And it's just gonna give that a bit of a happy birthday just to get rid of some of the stuff that's on there. A lot of dirt and grime and grass clippings and all that sort of stuff. Let's give that a bit of a clean. Go a bit gentle with these, especially if you're using donor parts because uh, they do like to snap on you. And they're about six pound a set. They're not cheap. So now we want to just fish this onto here. As I say, very, very gentle with it if it snaps you'd be looking for a brand new spring. That's gone on. And then this one literally just goes through the loop and back on itself. Through the loop, back on itself. And you see how much slacker that is compared to the other one. Okay, so that's fitted now right. So that should improve it. That's why possibly it was revving a bit too high. Um, I have done the pull cord. That's done, that's down here. So we've got the coil um, lead wire on, coil's been tested. Um, spark plug's fine, but I have got another one in case I need it. I'm gonna pull my revs down just a touch, just by moving that tab back. That all works as it should do. Nothing is, is uh, caught up at all. So now, this can all go back on. 
I want to check the oil as well, because that could be a factor. Bolt them up, uh, put the air filter back on, and I'll meet you outside in two ticks. Okay, so I have bought the old spark plug out as well, just in case, okay? And I bought a, a, a um, screwdriver just to adjust the throttle should I need to do so, okay? So new pull cord on, a bit of a carburetor clean, spring donor. Let's see what happens. It was really jittery before, wasn't it? It wasn't happy at all. Okay, so it runs really, really well. So first thing I want to do, so I don't want to charge a bloke for a spark plug if it don't need it, okay? I'm not, I'm not up for that. I'm a, I try to be as honest as I can, but there may be a difference in spark plug. That wind's picking up. Hopefully not getting no, no interference. Let's put the old spark plug back in, because it was a new spark plug. That's it. And now let's just see what it runs like with a new plug-in. Oh, the, you know, the old plug, the original one. the old plug and the new very very slight it may just be me but uh, I can hear a very very slight noise and for the cost of a plug for the cost of a plug it's worth having if this is a commercial bloke but I use these he uses this just for little for little lawns from what I understand I can hear just just the, the faintest of of misses off of it See how that sounds. I'm trying to remember what it sounded like just, just a minute ago, so. Yeah, that sounds better. Yeah, that's, that's all good. Everything works as it should do. Nice one, Mark. Happy as pig in pup. Okay, so there you have it. Um, all it was, um, I think gasket and diaphragm was, 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 was a factor, without a doubt. The main jet um, wasn't flying as well as perhaps it could do, and the little tiny jet just inside uh, the carburetor looked very, very dry to me, despite the fact um, the fuel being really good. Also, the well had this, like, I suspect it to be um, aluminium um, sediment in the bottom there from, from the tank. Um, so that needed doing anyway. There is a difference between the plug. Um, it's a bit warm. I can definitely hear it. Um, old plug versus new. I don't know if you picked up on it, but there was a slight miss. Um, but both plugs have tested to be fine, um, but it just it does run better with a new plug in it. And for what I charge for a new plug, it, it, it's pounds, pennies. Um, so that's good. Um, also, the spring was a massive factor. Um, I did throw the old spring away in the bin, so you can't see it again now, but it did have a big leg on it, and it wasn't sold with a big leg on it. I know it wasn't. Um, it, it was as per. So someone's been in there. He did say someone had a bit of a fiddle. So um, that's what you get when you fiddle. So it's had a second-hand spring put in there, carburetor clean, uh, gasket and diaphragm all up and running. I've now got a look at his um, little strimmer. Um, it says it doesn't, doesn't run very well on uh, off a choke. So I'll look at that in a minute. He needs that back tomorrow as well. So sort of up against it a little bit at the moment, despite the fact everything else going on in the mixed mode shack. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Show your appreciation to the channel. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well, Wacky Bell, and all set notifications to all that until you want to done a video or two of them on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mo's very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take care easy.